Hey everyone, we're going to work on the Bally Game Show pinball machine. If you recall, I said that one of the flippers was kind of sluggish, so we've opened it up and we're actually going to try to do a flipper rebuild. And this is something that they, they say you can do after so many years of play, you know, things start to wear out and get kind of grimy. And uh, yeah, it's time. It is t probably time to do this. It's been in a home for 20 years. And prior to that, who knows if anything has been done. So we did go ahead and we picked up a flipper rebuild kit for it. And here, here it is. Let's see. Let me set up the tripod here. There we go. So here is the flipper rebuild kit. Now we got this from Pinball Life. And we also picked up a bushing for the flipper as well. They had those. This is the bushing that we will replace. And then I picked up, uh, you know, some leaf adjustment uh, tools from Marco and some rubbers that we'll put on at, at some point. But let's go ahead and take a look at the flipper and we can kind of figure out what's going on. Now, I will admit, I've never done this before, so we get to do this together. Isn't that kind of nice? Now, before you get started, you are going to need some tools to do this if you've never done this before. You've done this before, just, you know, tell me that I suck. <laughs> All right, you're going to need your soldering iron, and now you're actually going to be able to use that service switch inside, and that has power to it even though the game is off right now. You're also going to need probably a flathead screwdriver to kind of uh, spread things out a little bit once you undo some other parts. You're going to need probably a quarter-inch driver bit. You're also going to need a ratchet or a wrench to remove some parts as well. This one for this game is a 3 8 socket. And um, you're also going to need um, some Allen keys as well. And this is the Allen key I'm using here, and I don't know what size this is. Let's see. This is a 5 30 seconds sized Allen key. Your, yours may vary. But that's generally generally what you're going to need. You're going to need some Loctite as well if you don't have any sort of lock washers um, that, that are going on. But the kit does actually come with new screws and lock washers as well. So let's take a look here and see what we're working with. So if you're looking, you can probably tell that the flipper here on the right is a little bit shinier. That's because that's the new kit. And... Um, it just feels so much better. Sounds good. Um, I did not change the coil. We did put a new sleeve in though. And over here we have the old one. You hear it's kind of squeaky. You can't tell, but it does feel a little, you know, kind of a little grimy in there. It doesn't move and it's filthy. I'm getting dirty already. So we're going to go ahead and take this one out and we will We'll re rebuild it rather. Um, there's a few different ways you could do this. I'm going to end up removing this plate here because I need to put the bushing in. If you're not putting the bushing in, which is not a part of the kit, then you do not need to remove this, but you will need to remove it if you are putting the bushing. And we'll talk about that when we get there. We are also going to need to do some desoldering on here. And I think part of the reason that I never really did much when it came to um, working on pinball machines is just everything soldered in place drove me nuts. Like I want quick disconnects, but honestly, if you use quick disconnects, they're going to rattle off. But there we go. So one of the first things we're going to need to do, and I'm just going to kind of walk us through this. I think this is how we're going to <laughs> how we're going to do this. I'm probably wrong, but we're going to need to desolder the wires here for the end of strokes rich that go from the solenoid over to the end of stroke switch. And the end of stroke switch is here. And what happens is it gets activated when you hold in the flipper button, holds it open. And basically we go from using high voltage to low voltage. And that's what that switch is there for. This one is normally closed, meaning these contacts are touching. Um, other pinball machines have normally open ones, which means it actually closes the switch. So there's that. Um, so yeah, we're going to desolder these wires here, and then we're going to need to loosen this nut here. 
so that we can get that flipper free on the front side of the play field. And then the next thing we're going to do is undo some, there are two screws up here, and that's kind of like the coil stop that's holding this coil in place, and then that will come out and we will start disassembling it. Once we've got that out, we can go ahead and undo these eight screws going all the way around and take that whole plate off. And it's not a bad job. The first time you do it, it's going to take a little bit of time, but after that, it should be pretty quick. So uh, let's see if we can get started here. So we're here looking at the end of stroke switch. It's a little bit dark over here, but we've got this one green wire here and this other green wire in the back that we just need to remove the solder off of, and then these wires will come free. I do like to note where they go um, just because I'm not always entirely sure. I think with a switch, it's not gonna matter in this case because it's completing a circuit, but I still like to put everything back to where it went. So we've got, the. this is going from the outside. You can see it over here. This is the outside of the coil, and this is going to the one closest to us. And we're gonna go from the middle one to the far away lead there on the leaf. And then, uh, then we should be good. Right? Right? How are all the people today? Let's see if we can do this without burning ourselves. This is what I don't like about it. Yeah, my non-steady hand already. There we go. There we go. There's one off. And yes, it is that easy. And we're going to see if I can do this without knocking the camera over. We're burning any extra wires here. Man, when you do this with a camera in front of you, it is a little bit of a pain. There we go. We did it. We got those wires free. On to the next step. All right. Next up, we're going to have a little bit take a quick little sip of some whiskey here and then we'll uh, keep going. All right, time to take off this nut right here. And this is the part that's moving. And this post goes to the flipper on the other side. And we'll show you that when it comes out. Sometimes I think the ratchet's not going the right way and then I have to double check and then it was going the right way. And as that gets loose, as loose as we need it, and then ideally it comes right out. But you know what? It never does and that's okay because we have a flathead screwdriver here. And what we're gonna do is just take this flathead screwdriver and we're going to kind of, we'll just kind of separate this. And if you look, man, that, this whole uh, bolt assembly with the nut is actually bent over the years. All right. Now we'll grab the flipper from the other side. See how it moves when I grab it? We gotta see, we gotta see if we can undo that. Get that to separate a little bit. There we go. I'm kind of holding it, and if you guys can see, it is spinning. And I don't want to put like WD-40 on this because I think that would make it too slippery down the road. I mean, if I was replacing everything and not using these flippers again, then it would be fine. All right. And here, is the flipper and you can see that we've got the post that goes through and connected over here and we were just kind of wiggling that to get it out. We'll clean that actually and when we do disassemble everything we will clean it all. All right, 
Next up, the coil stop. So we have the coil stop, which is this metal bracket here at the top. We're going to undo both of those bolts and we will end up replacing that coil stop with the new ones. We'll just go ahead and put our Allen key in here. And these things are usually on pretty good. There we go. All right. And then we'll cheat. Take these off quickly. Don't lose them because it's nice to have extras or in case you strip the brand new one like I did. Okay. And I just like to store things right on top of that magnetic speaker uh, or you put them in the coin bucket so you don't lose them. All right, so that is that. Now we can go ahead and let me just readjust. Now we can go ahead and take, we'll take this coil stop off and that comes off like that. And we'll save that just in case we need it. And then we can pull out the coil. See how that comes out like that? We've got our, our flipper part here and then there's a sleeve in here. And um, I think this is just dirty. I thought about buying some new ones, but, and there is a mark here. You see that? Like a little arrow on this side that tells you which way the sleeve goes in. But if you recall, it actually goes up against the coil stop there. So then just push it from the opposite side maybe Woo, it's crunchy maybe i should have ordered a new coil we'll see Ooh. well i'm gonna work on getting that out and then i'll show you the other one came right out and this is filthy you will get dirty all right so i just tapped this side here with the back of the screwdriver and now oh geez it moved but it doesn't necessarily want to come out Ooh, i'm gonna need a new coil aren't i there we go here's this so the sleeve should just slide out there we go it is coming out i might pick up a new coil look at that there it is filthy and dirty and grimy and um, that would be why it's kind of slow all right so we're gonna leave that dangling here for a minute we'll put this kind of out of the way and these are heavy so fun nice spot to rest it you could decide the whole thing but I'm not going to do that right now all right and now you can actually we can take out we can take everything out if we'd like. We're not going to need these parts, but we'll save them just in case. We have new ones of those. And then what we're going to do is remove this plate because we are replacing this bushing right here. You don't need to replace it, um, but I would recommend replacing it. It'll just make you know that you've done it and it's a good time to do it, um, especially if it's as dirty as this one is looking. So we're gonna go ahead and take out, take off that plate. Just use your quarter inch driver here.
hands full of screws. <laughs> I didn't want to drop them all. I'll put those on the speaker. Here's the last one. Look at that, it almost wanted to stay stuck to the wood. All right. And now we can just take this whole plate off, just like that. So now we're gonna go put it on the workbench and we will change out this bushing here and we'll change the end of stroke switch and this capacitor. Oh, and you know what? Because it's extremely dirty, we're gonna clean it as well because it's filthy. That's what the back side looks like, just in case you're curious. There are nuts on the back of this right here, which is why <laughs> you can't do this without taking the plate off. All right, time to go clean it. All right, go ahead and take your soldering iron and move it over because you're gonna need it over here as well when you replace the capacitor and the end of stroke switch. So the first thing we've got to do is kind of start unscrewing everything. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. But we'll uh, unscrew the bushing, but before you try unscrewing this bushing, please make sure you put a pair of pliers or something on the back here because you'll just strip those screws. And I probably should just get a wrench, but this works. Yeah, so just these three nuts here to hold this bushing in. There we go. It'd be so much faster if I actually took the time to get the sockets. Why would I not do that? You know, I thought I'd loosen these more than this. There you go. There's one more nut. Now we've got two nuts. We get a third one right here. I'll just go ahead and take those screws out. We'll put in our new bushing. These don't just slide out, you do need to screw them out. Even though you took the nut off. And try not to strip them. wish when you got these bushings they give you new screws can't tell if that's like old <laughs> wax stuck in there or loctite stuck in there no like no they're, they're threaded with something no well, maybe that's just the what am i doing here 
Yeah, that's just the nylon. Need a bigger screwdriver. Maybe. Maybe that'll work better. Man. Maybe the nylon is just shrunk. I'm assuming these are nylon. These nylon? Somebody knows. What is the hold up here? All right, bushing is finally free. Just a bunch of junk on the back side, I think, keeping this one screw from hating life or not wanting to let go of life. <laughs> Screw did not want to let go, and uh, I should probably get another one from somewhere so it doesn't strip out. Look at all this stuff. You see all that junk in there? That's what was keeping it in. It's like wax? I don't know what that is. All right, that's out. That's out. Let's go get our new one. All right, let's go ahead. We'll Open this new bushing here. So here's the new one. So we'll just go in, just like that, line up our holes. I did clean it off a little bit more because it was pretty dirty under there. And there was that junk there. Should be nice and smooth. That's what it should be like. I'm sure the other one kind of shrunk over time too, making it harder to get out or just junk in there, one or the other. It goes in so much easier. All right. And the really stripped one. We're putting it back in for now. All right. Then we just go ahead and we'll put the nuts on the back. And we've done that part. That was easy, right? That's easy. You guys can do this, man. If I can do this, you can do this. If you're mechanically inclined. It, it does take a little bit of time. I mean, you know, it's not a quick 15-minute job. I mean, maybe if you're professional, it's a 15-minute job. But, you know, you run to those things where, oh, that part's not coming off, etc. But, yeah, it's not that bad. You can do it. All right, let's kind of crimp these down a little bit. They don't need much.
There we go. We done did it. Our new bushing is in. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is take off the end of stroke switch and that capacitor. That's pretty easy to do. We just undo those two screws and clip the zip tie and we are off and running. All right, so we'll go ahead and clip this. Pull out the zip tie so it's not in the way. Undo these two screws. These ones aren't tight. They don't have any junk to worry about. There is a lock washer on there, so don't lose that. If you see, there is another little bracket here that's right there. We're gonna make sure we keep that as well. And then we can take this plate off. Now that capacitor is held in, so the, the switch is free. But the capacitor does have double-sided tape on. We're just gonna have to rip that off. And there we go. And we'll save this in case we, you know, need something for our parts. We'll clean up the switch and then use that again sometime. But yeah, let's clean this junk off in here. That little thing's gonna stay. Make it as clean as we can. All right, then we've gotta put our new one on. Let me get that all set up. Okay, we've got our bag here of parts. We need the next thing. We need this yellow, bright yellow capacitor, and we're gonna need our new end of stroke switch. It will probably need to be adjusted because my guess is gonna be way out of line. So then we'll close our bag, put that off to the side. We're also going to need some heat shrink tubing. So I'm just gonna take some heat shrink tubing out of here I get the small size that you got. I'm running low on my small stuff, so this is going to work. At least it will when we go ahead and shrink it, right? So what we're basically going to need to do is we're going, if we take a look at the old one here, here's the old one. We'll even just kind of match things up. You know, we're going to take it and take the two leads and we're going to solder them here. But we're also going to need to put some heat shrink tubing onto the wire because you do not want these metal wires to touch anything else where things go boom or kaboom or zap or you know, blow transistors or something so let's not let's not do that so we'll go ahead and we'll stretch these out these are plenty long enough you want to leave them long don't trim them because they need to kind of bend in every which way to get where they're going and we just make sure we put these on now because if you don't put them on now you'll forget and then it'll actually be too late. And then all we gotta do, come in and put this on here. And as far as I can tell, polarity does not matter, but we will kind of bend this a little bit so that it's, you know, oh, I dropped it. It rolled off, because I didn't shrink it. Hold on, I gotta find it. I couldn't find it, I had to pull out a new one. Of course, I, didn't, I looked for like two seconds. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead, kind of solder everything in here. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, let's see here. Here we go, solder. All right. Just gonna put a little bit more in so that it goes through to the other side. All right, let that cool for a second. And 
And then we'll put the other side on. Oh, don't forget, you need your, your heat shrink tube. And remember, you're gonna have to bend this thing around, so don't don't go crazy. Just kind of make it make it work. All right, sure, like that. We'll solder that in. Hopefully there's enough solder there for when we go put our other part on, or you know, our solenoid back on, our coil solenoid thing, the thing of a bob. All right, there we go. And then we'll go ahead and shrink it. Let's see. You know what? I might. When I did the other one, when I shrunk it, the heat gun was so powerful it made the switch fall apart. Maybe it won't this time. Maybe it won't. That would be great, right? Just what you guys want to see. Tim breaks it again. What's the saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's not broken. It's just, you know, needed some attention. So here we go. We got our, our heat gun. We'll zoom out. Yep, there it is, Harbor Freight Special. I'll go ahead and try to keep it away from the, the switch there. Good enough, good enough. Just shrink it a little bit. If you use the right size, you wouldn't have my problem. All right. shrunk a little bit. I need to get more heat shrink tubing. Okay. Good job, team. Now remember, it's going to end up looking something like this when we put it back in, so we will have to kind of bend that capacitor in place, and that's fine. And we will put it back in over here all right, there we go. I need to make sure I have it going the right way. So remember, it was like this. It was like that. So we'll make sure we put it in the right way because sometimes I put parts in backwards. And then I go to try to, you know, finish the job and I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. Gee, I wonder why. What a little brown it is. There's the bracket. I thought I lost the bracket. All right. Put the screw in. the other screw in, put the little quick tabs here, all right, There we go. There's that. Now we just need to move this capacitor kind of into place here, something like that. We also want to make sure, for good measure, that even though we did put heat shrink tubing on here, 
I like to make sure it's not touching metal because, you know, things going to vibrate a lot. So we're going to move that away anyway. And then they gave us a zip tie. So we'll take the zip tie. We'll put that in. All right, so through the hole. Now the other side, kind of position that right where that old adhesive backed double sided tape was. And I mean, if you have that double sided tape, go ahead and use it. Right. And I'm just going to pull out this lead here so it's not resting on anything. There you go. There, we did it. I'm going to put it back in the machine now. Let's just clip off our excess here. Make sure this is nice and tight. It's as tight as it's going to be. All right. We're ready to go start putting everything back together. Isn't that great? That was easy. We did that. It was pretty quick, too. All right. Let's head back to the game. We'll take the soldering iron with us, too. All right. Let's put everything back into place. Hopefully we remember how everything went. Um, remember, so when we're looking at our plate that we took off, here's our new bushing and the back of it, and that is going to go into this hole here. And while I have a damp paper towel, I will clean off that stuff. I mean, why not, right? So we'll go ahead. That's just going to sit here just like that. And then we can go ahead and start putting some of the screws back in. Get our first or couple in and then we'll go to town. Remember, don't go too tight because you'll start ripping out wood. I mean, just tight enough, because if it starts to, if it keeps spinning, you, you've ripped wood, and that hole is now no good until you repair it. All right, two in, so we'll just kind of work our way around now. Drop it, don't drop it. I'm going to drop it. All right, let's back in. Let's we'll kind of check everything.
All right, very good. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna put the linkage in. So here's the linkage. There may not be a spring on it, but there's a little tab here. Um, they have a little piece of like, you know, heat shrink tubing that they've put on there. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that that is the side that will actually hit the end of stroke switch. So if you put it on upside down, it won't work. So you wanna make sure it is down so it can actually hit the switch. And this hole here, this is where the flipper will go through. So that's, we'll, we'll have to keep that in mind when we put that through from the, from the front. And then we'll make sure that it gets adjusted. And then we have a spring as well. And the spring will put the skinny side towards um, this little linkage here. This is going to go into this hole like this. So this linkage is going, coming up against that rubber stop. And then we're just gonna leave this here for a second because we need to go ahead and put the, uh, the flipper in. So here is the flipper. We'll go ahead and we're gonna stick that in. From the front side, we'll get it you know, tight enough. And then what we'll do is actually make sure it's lined up before we crank it down. All right. So that's there. It shouldn't fall out. You can probably put that flipper in first. And then we just gotta make sure it gets through just like that. All right. And it should be flopping around on the other side, and that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna kind of leave that, go put that like that. I'm gonna crank it down a little bit just so I can have it there. Maybe you wanna, I'm dropping tools. Maybe you wanna put the, the coil in first. We're gonna do that after we do this though. I just want to get some tension on it. Make sure this is going the right way. Nope. It was not. All right. I just barely tightened it up. So it will move, but it can also spin. So we're good. We're going to leave it just like that. And then we'll adjust it in a second. All right. Let me get a new battery because that always happens to me. The linkage is there. I had to get a new battery. It happens a lot. All right. In your bag of parts, you're going to need something out of it. You're going to need the sleeve from the bag and we're going to and you're going to need a new coil stop. So we've got our coil stop here. Okay. And what happens is this is this shiny part, this little cylinder part, that is the edge. If we go like that so we can see it. That is the edge that goes into the coil. And that sometimes gets mushroomed out from getting banged around. It actually does come with new screws in this bag. So we'll put these new screws in. They've got some lock washers on. And then we need this kind of grayish tan plastic sleeve here for the solenoid. And we'll put that in as well. So first things first, remember, we're going to go ahead and we'll put this sleeve into the coil. Didn't I say there was something on there? Hold on. Let's think here for a second. Oh, yep. This way. All right, so we put the new sleeve in, and then, let's see, ugh, like this. Oh wait, you know what? It's like this. I can't remember, hold on. I gotta go do something. I gotta figure it out. I remember now. Had to go back and look at the pictures I took. No shame in it. There is a little arrow down here. 
And that is the side I pulled this out of. So we're going to put that in like that. And that slid in good. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll line this, line this up like this. That's how it was in there. And then we need to go get our, what you might call it? Oh, our new coil stop. That's what we need. Here is a new coil stop. We get those fancy new screws, put the lock washers on, and then we just solder the wires on and we're good. We did it. And I only had to like refer to things a few times. See, we can do this together, right? Together, that's key. I do it, I make the mistakes. You're like, screw this guy. I'm gonna go watch the real pinball people. They know what they're doing. Tim's an amateur, it's fine. But you know what's gonna work in the end, so that's okay. I'm just putting my screws with the lock washers on. Will I talk to you? All right, so that little cylinder goes in the hole like that. Beautiful. And we do need, we need our tool to put it in place. There we go, just like that. And it's like they're little thumb screws. So at least you can get them started. I like that. That's when things work out well. Everything lined up. And uh, if you are trying to put the screw in and you're fighting it, don't, you'll strip it. Don't make it go. It'll line up. There we go. And then we'll take our Allen key and actually crank it on because that thing is going to move around and get banged. But I wouldn't use anything larger than an Allen key. I'm sure there is a torque setting. I wonder if anybody knows what it is. They're like, yeah, tight enough. There we go. Just enough to kind of cinch it in place. All right, we haven't finished yet. We still need to solder on these two wires and I do need to actually tighten this up. That feels better already. I like it. I may get another coil at some point, but for now that's gonna work. We'll see what happens. All right, what do I need to do now? I need, oh, the other thing we're probably gonna need to adjust is our end of stroke switch, is it barely hits it and actually doesn't open it up. So we will need to adjust that. We'll do that after we get everything in place. Let me do it. Let's see, I'm gonna get my flipper lined up. There it is. Check it before it gets too tight. That's still good. And unfortunately, these things, man, if these aren't tight, you know, you will, uh, you'll just find that, you, you know, your flippers, you know, get out of alignment with a couple of hits. And, uh, and that's enough for me to come in and readjust it. The other thing is, you know, when you start putting them on too tight, it will start to dimple the metal. So you got to find a nice sweet spot. 
you really crank it in place. All right, we're gonna go right with that. I think it, yeah, I like that. All right. All right, we've got our spring, did our linkage, did our end of, well, we need to adjust the end of stroke. We did the capacitor. And now we need to solder on, and then we're good after the adjustment. We'll be done. We'll have done the thing. All right, now we see if I can actually solder this in place. While it's on camera, I'm just going to match my old one as far as where the wires went just to stay consistent. So this tab here in the back, the most difficult one, we're going to do first. And that one came from the middle wire. So that's this one right here. But yeah, this is the part that's not fun. So I'll see if I can do this with a camera in my way. It's like point of view, literally, is my point of view. So don't touch other wires because you'll, uh, you know, Burn them. I'll put more solder once I know I can get it in place. All right, that one's in. That was the advantage of putting fair amount of solder to start. Did I touch a wire with this? No. This one here. That was the one I was worried about. We did it. We are attached. Attached? Attached. I'll come in and check those. And uh, we just need to adjust our end of stroke switch now. So we're going to adjust the end of stroke switch. This is the end of stroke switch. This little tab comes over and hits the switch. Okay. And we want to try to do this from, from the plunger because that is the actual moving part here. Now it is touching that switch, but it's not opening it. It needs to open that switch. So we're going to try to get that adjusted and we'll zoom in as best we can here. So if we take another look. Just not quite doing it. So you can use a tool, you can use your fingers. We may need to use a little bit of both. Put some pressure on it and bend it in. See what happens. Not enough. You also want it to not be doing it too early. It's starting to hit it. Let's see if I can. My little tool here. Do the other one as well. All right, bend it that way. There we go. So I want to put some pressure on. This other one too, because I want this back leaf to move with it, like be pushing on it. So we're gonna kind of give it a little bit more. Hey, good. Now we can see that it moves back into place. So there is some tension on that, and that's all we need to do. Just have that switch kind of open right up. And sometimes when you you know you install these, they're not quite adjusted right, so you do need to adjust them. There you go. And I, want a, I don't want that. I want a little bit more. It opens. I want it to open up just. All 
I think that's good. A little bit of pressure on this one. There we go. I like that. And there we go. That is our end of stroke switch adjusted. And now we're going to go ahead and break it. Turn it on and break it. We're going to check all our connections first to make sure we didn't miss anything. But yeah, that's it. You did it. Or I did it. You'll be doing it next. A flipper rebuild kit. And uh, they're probably like, you know, 20 to 40 bucks depending on the game you're doing it with. So all things that you guys can do on your own. Or you could hire somebody to do it. And that's good too because it keeps those guys in business. We need those guys around. So big shout out to uh, let's see, Gilbert Gottlieb. <laughs> Heath from Louisville Pinball. He, uh, he's given me some tips on helping get this thing going. So big thanks to Heath over at Louisville Pinball if you're from anywhere outside. Louisville. I think that's how they say it down there. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. All right, I'm gonna go check things and we'll see if it works. So I just finished rebuilding the flippers here. Um, we're gonna try it out. We'll see how it goes. Um, hopefully they play a little bit better than it did before. I've got some light bulbs and things out, some rubbers out. Still, they're not rubbers out. The rubbers aren't out, they're there, but I have like a post I need to fix because it's missing the nut on the back of it, up on the plastic ramp, um, bulbs out, things like that. The whole back of the, that whole marquee light there in the back, like with all the little bulbs, that, none of them are on. So I gotta take a look and figure out what's going on with that. With that. I highly doubt all of them are burnt out. Um, so I bet you there's a connector or something somewhere, loose, undone, I don't know. But we're going to try out those flippers right now. So I don't, I'm not going to get a good angle of this at all. We'll, we'll, we'll try this angle and we'll try another one of the next game. So here we go. I want to see if you can just see the score. There you go. You can see the score kind of at the top of your screen. All right, here we go. All right, Keith McTeeth. Oh, I don't have the glass. I just grabbed the ball. Yep, yep, yep. I would like to try the flippers. The right one feels good. I haven't leveled this out yet either. There was a left one that was kind of sluggish. Ooh. Yeah. Here you go, left flipper. I don't even get a good shot. See. Right flipper, right flipper. There we go, here we go. Ooh, that was a nice hard hit. Okay. Yeah, it feels better. For sure. Alright, there we go. Left flipper. Yeah, that feels better. If I could just actually hit something, would be good. Yeah, definitely not as sluggish as it was, at least in my opinion. Yeah, that feels better. Oh, gotta pay attention to him. Yeah, that definitely feels better. Ball three. All right, let me try another angle real quick. 
All right, this angle is not great because you only can see like the first half of the play field, but we'll, we'll, you know, hopefully you can see some flipper action. Of course, I can't see the ball. The camera's in the way. All right, left flipper. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Yeah. That thing launched it all the way back up to the hard drop target in the back. All right, well you guys get the idea. I think it works better, right? All right guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And uh, we'll thank uh, Keith McTeeth here. <laughs> Keith McTeeth.